but how did we get here? What's up, everyone? I'm Adrian Jensen from ProductionCreate.com, and I am a professional visual effects artist. But am I though? I mean, I've been doing it 10 years. I'm pretty good at After Effects, but I can't do 3D. I can't do 3D. I have no 3D chops whatsoever. Every time I need something 3D made, I'm like, oh, Chris, can you please help me? Oh, David, can you please help me? Mate, but that ends today. I'm about to give myself one month to learn how to use Blender, and I'm gonna take you on the journey with me. This is more dynamic than I expected it to be. Is anyone else's hair getting too long? <laughs> Let's go. So it is still day one right now. The first thing that I did is I went to a website called Skillshare, but the uh, beginner courses they had for Blender just didn't seem to be that good. I even watched one and there was like a four minute video about hotkeys and it was like four minutes of explaining the importance of hotkeys without teaching me a single hotkey. That's not useful. The other thing that I noticed is that I guess that they've changed Blender recently and they made it a lot more user-friendly and intuitive, which means that a lot of the content that was on that website was outdated. So I went on, believe it or not, Blender's official YouTube channel, I know, and they do have a Fundamentals of Blender 2.8 tutorial series. It's like 40 videos. So that's what I'm gonna use to kind of familiarize myself with the interface and then hopefully later on in the week I can get to something a little bit more flashy. All right, let's do it. So I'm a few days in now. I think I now have enough of a handle on the UI and the fundamentals and stuff that I can start moving on to some specific things that more pertain to what it is that I'll be doing here. So we're a visual effects company. I need to be able to take footage and add stuff into it which wasn't there in real life. And for that, I need motion tracking. So I'm gonna actually look up a motion tracking specific tutorial. I'll let you know how that goes. It's a DIY haircut, you know, we're still in the middle of the apocalypse. The barber shops are closed. I think it's not bad, all things considering. <sighs> okay, sorry, I don't have my microphone on right now. Um, so I just tried to do this tracking and I did a horrible job, did a really bad job. So um, I'm gonna keep at it, but as it turns out, it's just not as straightforward as I assumed it was gonna be. Cause in After Effects, it's just, you know, you add one effect and it's done, you know. Uh, I'm gonna keep at it and I'll check back with you later. <laughs> I tried to cheat. I found a script that supposedly can take tracking data from After Effects and import it into Blender. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna skip learning this. I'm gonna do it that way. Uh, but fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know, that script ended up not working for the current versions of those effects. So I had to learn it. And here's my first, you know, successful track. Yeah, it's not really blowing my mind either, but I did do it. I learned how to track. Uh, the process is a bit more involved than it is in After Effects, but I guess it's ultimately more accurate. So I guess that's pretty good. And then after some more experimenting, I came up with this, which is still not blowing my mind. It's it's a pretty basic uh, like beginner learning render, but I'm a beginner who's learning. So to composite it, I also had to learn how to use um, like layered EXRs or whatever they're called. So I could composite it in After Effects because the Blender compositor seems impossible to learn. Although a week ago, I thought Blender seemed impossible to learn. So, hmm, maybe it's not. We'll see, huh? I made a donut. If you don't know, the donut is kind of a classic Blender tutorial that was made by Blender Guru. And it's a little bit of a meme amongst new Blender users that the first project you do is a donut. There's even a subreddit for it. Literally, all people do is post donuts that they made in Blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and post mine too. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. If you don't want to model your own donut on Render Crate, we do have some donuts that Chris and I photo scanned and we have a video about how we did that as well. So feel free to check that out. And otherwise, I mean, that's what I did today. So I'm going to check up with you guys sometime next week.
So right now I'm in a stage where I can follow tutorials and I can make stuff, but if I try and pick something on my own without looking at a tutorial, it just doesn't work. I just do everything wrong. I've been messing with the particle simulator a little bit. I really haven't done anything with it that I wouldn't have been able to also do in particular, but I do like it because I can get cool results with the particle sim in Blender a lot faster than I would have been able to in particular. And it's a lot of fun. So I know why Chris makes so many particle-y, magical-y things. Now I can be cool just like him. We gotta edit that out. I'm messing with liquid simulations right now, trying to get the fluids figured out. My donut got 137 upvotes on Reddit. Ooh, actually make that 138. <laughs> it's still gonna give me gold, so thanks for the gold, kind stranger. <laughs> So here's my first liquid sim. I'm not in love with it, but I did learn a lot in the process. First of all, it annoys me that every other liquid sim you see on the internet is just in an invisible box for no reason. So I decided to make my box make sense by putting it in the stairway in our building. So in order to make that work, I had to learn how to calibrate the camera and model some simple stairs using an array modifier. For the lighting and reflections, I made a custom HDRI with my phone. It's not anywhere near as fancy as the ones Chris made in our Create More Realistic CGI video. So if you want to see how a pro does it, take a look at that. But my silly phone image worked for me. Here's the second version, which I like much better. It is slowed down a lot because the first one was so fast that you couldn't even tell what was going on. It also has particles for bubbles and spray, and the liquid has some volumetric shading to make it look a little dirty. I guess my floor plane was missing a line so here it looks like the water is kind of flying above the ground which is annoying but i'm gonna move on with my life it has been a week since i last talked to you but what a week it has been so now that i've done water i figured i'd move on to something like smoke and fire simulations but for some reason, I just can't get the Manta Flow uh, gas simulations to work. So I'll wait and I'll wait and I'll wait and I'll wait for a simulation and then it'll finally finish. But the simulation comes out invisible. Why? Is it me? Is it my fault? Am I doing something wrong? I don't know, because they come out invisible every time. If you're a Blender person and you know the answer, let me know in the comments if I'm doing something wrong. But if I am, I don't know what it would be. Google doesn't know. None of us know. There is this new tool called Ember Gem that we've really been enjoying here at Production Create lately. It's actually a real-time fire and smoke simulator. So um, I actually don't really care if I can't get the mana flow gas and fire simulations to work because I can just use Embergen anyway, and I'd probably just use Embergen anyway, so whatever. So I thought instead I would move on to some physics, some soft body physics. And I thought it would be funny if I used our photo scan meatball from Render Crate. So here's what I did. Let me know. Is that actually funny? Am I right? Is it funny? So then I thought maybe it would be cool if I went back to the stairs scene that I made earlier and I had the meatballs bouncing down the stairs and I re-simulated the liquid, but this time as marinara sauce. I thought about using some of the particles that come with the liquid simulation and rendering them as leaves to be like basil or uh, herbs or whatever. I don't cook, I don't know. Uh, but that didn't really work out. Is this weird? Is this something a weird person would make? Yesterday I was looking at Twitter and one of our followers called Pet Rat Productions posted this image that he made of Chris inside the Render Crate astronaut. He also made this, this shirt, and he made this logo. In general, he's a bro. So I was like, bro, how did you do that? And he turned me on to this add-on called Face Builder. So I knew I was gonna try this today. And I figured since I'm used to photo scanning that my beard might get in the way because stuff like hair doesn't really photo scan very well. So I shaved it. So in case you're wondering, why I would choose to look like a hipster Bob's Burger character. I wouldn't. Now that I've done it, I realize that the beard would have been no problem. What the add-on gave me was this, which is technically me, but it's the worst, most horrifying, scariest version of me that I've ever seen. I guess it kind of works from a distance. I duplicated part of that mesh and I used a pear particle system to make some hair and a new beard, get me back to how I'm supposed to look. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly how I'm supposed to look. I also used the sculpting tools to fix some parts of the mesh that were clearly messed up. I'm making myself look a little bit less Vulcan, just a little bit. I haven't used Photoshop in forever, but I really needed to fix up this creepy texture that it gave me a little bit. So I smoothed out some of the parts that were a little bit blocky. Uh, frankly, the images that I used to make this were pretty junky. So I decided to take a couple of selfies right here at my desk and I used those to add in some more detail where I thought the texture was lacking detail. By the way, if you are interested in photo scanning faces, we have a whole pro course about how to do it for real and actually get a professional result, not a hacky one like this. Although I gotta say, after all this, it was creepy for a while, but I'm starting to really enjoy how this came out. What do you think I should do with it? Day 30, I'm here on the last day of the last week of my educational blender adventure. <laughs> so what did I do? I tried to make another face, it was Nico this time, but I ended up giving up when I got to the hair. His hair is a lot more complicated and beautiful than mine, so I figured doing it justice would probably take more time than I actually had left. So I had to move on, I'll come back to it later. Been playing around with character animation a little. Chris has a tutorial on doing this in Cinema 4D already, just so you know. I got this shark wiggling around using mostly noise modifiers. I also went on Mixamo and I got some sick dance moves and I used them to make this. So, that's something you've seen now. For my final hurrah, I wanted to do something completely epic and combine everything I learned into one big scene. But what I came up with was this. Not exactly thrilled with that simulation. Uh, what I learned from this is that I think doing large scale liquid simulations like this might be more trouble than it's actually worth because this was actually a few late nights just to get this. But that is my final piece. So this is where I'm gonna end the video. But ordinarily we do our outros over there in that room in front of the brick wall with our logo on it and the colorful lights and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and meet you guys over there. One of the things I didn't get the chance to complain about yet is the fact that pretty much every single important hotkey in Blender also does something on YouTube. So when I'm watching the tutorial and the guy tells me to hit control whatever, it just deletes the video or closes it or <laughs> skips around and I have to find my spot again. Ugh, it was so frustrating. But overall, I think this was a pretty worthwhile experience. Am I the world's greatest Blender now? No, that's Captain Disillusion. But am I an intermediate blender or now? Also, no. But I do have a handle on the basics, and I think what I need to do now is start incorporating Blender into my visual effects workflow and start using it on some real world projects. And that is what's gonna take me to the next level. And maybe by this time next year, I'll be pretty good. This was a little bit of a scary video for me to make. Ordinarily, our videos are very instructional and informational and uh, planned out. But in this case, I was risking potentially being bad at some Thing on camera. But I do think that maybe seeing a beginner's approach might be useful to other beginners. Do you agree with me? Do you think this was a useful or even an interesting video? Would you like to see more videos like this? If you would, let us know in the comments what you would like us to learn and maybe we'll give it a whirl. It'll also be helpful if you give us a like and share this with your friends because the only way we can continue doing experimental videos like this is if this video is successful. So at the beginning of this challenge, I did make a post to our Instagram inviting some of you to use this month to learn something as well. And I didn't expect pretty much everybody to respond to it, to just decide to learn Blender along with me. Uh, but that is what you did. So if you're one of those people, let me know in the comments how it went for you. Not that it's a contest or anything. Before I go, I want to give a special thanks to Ian Hubert, to CG Geek, and to CG Matter, Blender Guru, Alfie Vaughn, Pet Rat Productions, r slash Blender, r slash Blender Donuts, r slash Blender Tutorials, Chris Kelly, and you. Make it awesome. Yeah.